my back. This is going to be my favorite ways to save money. I want to talk with you guys really quick about how to save money um, because a lot of people were like asking me to talk about it because I mentioned it on Twitter. And if you don't follow me on Twitter, you should. I mentioned it on Twitter that I made a budget because after the holidays, not gonna lie, kind of broke. I've been pretty good at saving money ever since I got my first job. I haven't really had a problem with saving. I just need to get back on it because I kind of fell off a little bit. But um, I want to talk about different ways that I save. And I'm, excuse me if I look at my phone a lot, but I have notes. Recently, I was just, you know, just sitting around thinking about the different ways that I can save my money. I don't like to spend my money frivolously on stupid things and then run out right before I need it for something important. So I like to make sure that I keep up with my stuff. First, I want to talk about the number one way that I keep up with everything and that is my phone. If you haven't seen my What's My iPhone video, I talked about my finance app folder, which is this one right here. This is how I keep up with everything. When I'm out and about doing stuff, I have to make sure that I know exactly how much money I have on me so that I don't overspend and so that I know which account to use and what I need to save on and all that stuff like that. I think the most important app that I have for that is my Mint app. Mint is a online site where you can um, sign up and put in your information, everything that you own that's under your name, like if you have a house, if you have a car, whatever, and it tells you your net worth. It also will let you know how much money you have all together. So you can put all of your card information in there and don't worry, it won't be, it won't scam you or anything like that. It's a really, really secure site. It just tells you like how much money you spend each month. It gives you graphs and charts. It gives you different budgets that you can set so that you know where everything is going. And it'll also alert you if you spent too much, if you've gone over budgets. You can set budgets on Mint. I don't really use the budgets on Mint as much anymore. It does help me to keep up with everything that I have and knowing how much I have in all my accounts at once. So you can check it and see how much money you have in every single account at one time. You can put all your checkings and savings and all that stuff. Like I said, I have a couple of checkings accounts, but I have two primary savings accounts. Um, one of them is a savings account that I do not touch ever. And I have that one with Capital One. And I love Capital One savings because it doesn't take any annual fees or anything out of your account. It's just, you just put it in there and it sits and you leave it and you don't touch it. Of course, you can transfer money into it and transfer money out, but I try not to take any money out as only when I need to. So I keep the majority of my savings in there and I have money that automatically transfers into it each month. So when I get money into my checkings, I always send 10% of my money each month to my savings account, no exceptions. First thing I do each month is pay bills if I need to pay any bills and then I need to send money to my savings. Otherwise, I won't save at all. I make sure to set aside 10% of the money that I make to give back. So I always give back. I always make sure that I'm giving in some kind of way. Most of the time it's just giving at church. Um, I just pay my offering every every Sunday but I split it up into four. So I have my monthly budget for, for giving and I split it up into four and I pay that every week. I also like to set a little bit of money aside just for like gifts or whatever just in case somebody's birthday or something like that and I like to have that ready just in case so because you, you never know you never know whose birthday is coming up and you have to go to a birthday party or something you gotta get them a card and all that stuff like that you don't want to be like oh my god I don't have any money and then you're like oh I couldn't give anything because I'm broke never go to a birthday party empty-handed guys that's just etiquette if you give you're gonna receive I make sure that I know how much money I'm gonna spend on my groceries and then after that how much money I'm gonna spend on myself because I do save a certain amount of money each month to spend on myself. I think that's just important. Personal care is important. Hygiene is important. So I do have a little bit of money that I spend on myself, just a little tiny bit. So I like to set aside enough money to buy the groceries that I want. I have a Trader Joe's budget and a regular store budget. My Trader Joe's budget is a little higher because I love Trader Joe's. I make sure that I allocate how much money I spend each month there and leave that money aside for groceries because groceries are a must. After that, I have all of the rest of it to spend on whatever I need to. So if it's maintenance or, um, you know, stuff for the house, stuff for the car, the gas, all that stuff like that. I don't really pay for gas. And then whatever else I have left, I just leave it there. And if I don't need to spend it, don't spend it. If you don't have to spend money on unnecessary things, just don't do it. Like it, trust me, it just makes you feel so much better. I list every source of income that I have, how much money I make each month, and then I split it up and divide it into those things that I need to divide it into. And then make sure the first of the month, if I have my money ready, 
first of the month or the first week of the month, I just start putting stuff away so that I'm not even looking at it. I'm not touching it. It's not going to bother me if I don't have it because it's not even there. It's in the savings and it's chilling. Now, my other savings account that I have is with a new company called Digit. I actually really like it. It's a new company startup that they have like a system where you sign up, you link your bank account to Digit and it's totally safe. It's not gonna steal anything from you. I would never tell you guys about something that's gonna steal from you. I use it personally myself. I get texts from Digit every day. It basically learns how you spend money. So it kind of monitors how much money you're spending, um, how much money you're making, and it takes out little bits of money every now and then. But it's never anything that you can't afford. It'll just take out a couple dollars here and there so that you're saving what you're not spending, if that makes sense. Every day, Digit texts me and lets me know my checking balance. Sometimes I just like to know how much money I have on me. I wake up in the morning and I think about all the things that I need to do that day. Getting a text from Digit that tells me how much money I have is like, oh, okay, cool. So I can spend some money today. Or, no, nah, Shawty, you need to stay home. You don't need to spend no money today. It's really helpful in letting me know when I get money into my account, when I spend money from my account, and how much money I have currently. Like I said, over time, it learns how you spend, so it starts saving money for you. Even if it takes some money out of your account and you really didn't want it to take any money out of your account, you can immediately transfer that money back. So unlike my Capital One savings account, where I have to wait three to five business days for it to transfer back to me if I transfer some money in. This one doesn't take three to five days. It takes one day. And I think that's what I love so much about this savings account. You can have the money instantly accessed to you and you're still saving in a way. So it makes you feel better just to know that you're saving it still. Just remember to be smart with your money, guys, because there's nothing like more depressing than being broke. Like being broke is sad. Like when you go to Burger King and you wanna buy some food and you drive up to the window and you can't pay for your food, like that's really the most depressing thing on the planet. Planets. Just make sure that you have enough to live off of for just in case moments. You need that because you never know when something will happen and you're gonna have to pay for it. Um, I've also talked about other ways to make money. So e like even if you sign up for sites like Ebates where you can get cash back using sites like Retail Me Not, um, apps like Ibotta or other um, ways that you can get coupons. Um, I'm not an extreme couponer, so I don't know how to do that, but Ebates is a great way to do that because when I online shop, I always use Ebates before I make a purchase just so I can get a little bit of cash back. I use apps like Ibotta where you can um, buy groceries and get cash back, like cents back on your groceries. Like that stuff makes a difference. So make sure that you're signing up for different stuff like that so you can have different ways of money coming back to you even when you are spending money. Be wise. Make sure you keep up with everything and that's it. I just want to talk to you guys about that stuff. So I will talk to you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.